So hello again, everybody, and welcome back to my podcast. It's called It's Good to Talk. It's always good to talk. People know me because I produced this book for my good friend, Tony McGurn. And that's how it all started. It took us a couple of years to write it. It's his life story from 1941 up until recently. Lots of history and all that. You can buy it on Amazon. It's also on audio. It does have some naughty parts, so be careful. You might have to put confessions. My sponsors are Liffey Van Lines, moving company here in York City. And they've been around for, oh, nearly 50 years. Lots of experience there. They do moving jobs all over the city, and they also do storage. So remember, when it comes to moving, let Liffy do the lifting. Now, before I, I always have a special guest. Today is no exception. I have a young man on today, and we'll be talking about whiskey, which is an easy topic for me, because I enjoy a drink now and again. Now, last week when I was on, I was doing a podcast about with Adam Cardona, and we were talking about cryptocurrency. He was talking about the new, and I went back to the history of currency. I went way back to barter, and before we even had paper money and coins. And my favorite economist of all times is Adam Smith. Adam Smith was born in Scotland near Edinburgh, world-renowned. He's known for a book called The Wealth of the Nations. He's also known for a concept that works today, the division of labor. And I must have had a Freudian slip or froze. He was born in 1723. And I said he was born in 1973, so I, I gave him a 200 years there of his life. Maybe, I'm, maybe I want him to be around today because there are not too many good economists. So with that, let me move on to another gentleman from Edinburgh, incidentally, and his name is Graham Hawken, and he is the promoter brand manager for a whiskey called O'Driscoll's. Graham, welcome to my podcast. Good morning, John. Thanks so much for having me. Good to have you. So am I right in saying you were born in Edinburgh? Yes, that's right. Just like Adam Smith. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, you have a lot of shoes to fill. <laughs> um, you also got married in Edinburgh, I believe. I did, yes. My, um, my wife and I got married in St. Giles Cathedral, right in the heart of Edinburgh last summer. Very good. And I believe that's where my other good friend, the Queen of England, was laid to rest. It was. It was a little scary, actually, because unfortunately the Queen died uh, about five weeks after the oh. wedding. And she was indeed laid to rest uh, overnight when she oh. was being transported from Balmoral to Edinburgh and right. Edinburgh to London. And she was yeah. she was laid to rest there overnight in, in St Giles. In fact, it was the wow. same minister, actually, that married us that, that oh, conducted that's that service. I, 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 on this podcast, I often... I often kind of slag the Queen off a bit, but actually I have great respect for her. She was a great mother, and like a lot of mothers, she had a difficult family to raise. And I also give her credit for teaching me how to speak English. But I noticed, uh, I found out recently when she addressed the Parliament in Ireland a number of years back, that she actually spoke in Gaelic. And mm. that was very interesting that the Queen of England should uh, say a couple of Oscalia to the Irish Parliament, and I like her for that. I also like her for the fact that she shook hands with a good friend of mine, Martin McGuinness, and I shook Martin's hand. So I shook the hand that shook the hand. So now, <clears throat> Graham, we that's enough about that. We'll move on to this whiskey brand that you're promoting. Let's talk about your whiskey, O'Driscoll's. Certainly. <clears throat> Um, so Driscoll's Irish Whiskey is a relatively new to market competitor brand for the well-known standard brands such as Jameson, Tullymore Dew, Powers, Proper 12, Bush Mills. Um, but I have to say, I, I have enjoyed it way more than I would enjoy any of those these okay. days. You know, I'm uh, yeah. a little bit of a Scotch aficionado. And when, I, when this opportunity arose and my wife said to me, you know, you can uh, you can sell this Irish whiskey. I, so I was a little skeptical, if I'm honest. When I first started, you know, a Scotsman selling Irish whiskey. There's a joke in there somewhere, and um, uh, but when I tasted it, I couldn't believe the, the taste profile. It's absolutely phenomenal. Um, in fact, my wife Katie actually did a couple of blind tastings from my own personal Scotch collection in the house. I've probably got about thirty bottles of Scotch, and I. You know, I admit I got it completely and utterly wrong. She poured three single malts in O'Driscoll's and I was convinced that uh, I was drinking a single malt. And of course, I was completely wrong. So I've been very pleasantly surprised at the, the, the taste profile. Um, to me, it's, it's a far superior taste than those other uh, blended Irish whiskies that I mentioned. 
Well, that's interesting that you did the blind taste. I met you in Finnegan's Wake a few weeks back. Yes, I was, there, right. I was there with some friends of mine, um, Courtney Rowe and her friend Claudia and Stanley. And you could say we did a blind, a blind taste test as well, mm -hmm. because the girls are, well, Claudia is probably the best connoisseur of whiskey, and she's usually a Tullamore Jew person. But when we did the blind test with Claudia, she actually loved the O'Driscolls. She said it was smooth, it was crisp, there was no kind of aftertaste. And those were the, her comments, not my comments. I'm only paraphrasing here. So it does seem to have something going for it. I like the presentation. I like the bottle, actually. It's a green, green bottle, which seems to have a thing about Irish whiskey. It's like the Jimison's of the world, especially. How long have you been promoting the brand? So I've actually only been in Rome for the last five or six weeks. I'm on week six at the moment. I started on the 1st okay. of August. Um, well, Just was actually launched uh, stateside in January. And interestingly, we, we launched simultaneous with Africa. Um, so there haven't really been many feet on the ground as such in the United States or in North America. So I am pretty much Mr. O'Driscoll here in the States. Okay, very good. Uh, and I'm, I'm loving it. You know, I'm... Uh... Well, I, I must say you're a very good salesman. I did a little, <laughs> I did a little bit of research on O'Driscoll's and it's, it's, uh, it comes from a place called Baltimore. Yes, that's right. York. And I actually, ironically enough, I've been a lot of places and I've been to Baltimore. And it's a beautiful uh, seaside town, very touristy. It's the most southern point in Ireland. It's really, really on the point end of Ireland. Lots of ferries to lots of islands. And now I have a question for you. On a, on a video promotion, I came across a gentleman from Baltimore, and he's 103 years old, OK? 103. And he was drinking the whiskey that you have there. Yes. Obviously. And I'm wondering is his name O'Driscoll number one. He's 103 years old and he was, um, let, let, I would have a conversation with him and I would let him win the argument. Let's put it that way. He was, <laughs> a, little, he was a little bit feisty, but I guess if you have four or five shots of O'Driscoll's in you, you're entitled to get a bit feisty. So, so I, I think you might be referring to Dermot uh, O'Driscoll, who uh, was uh, the 100 and, 104, actually, I believe, and I, uh, was the brand ambassador for O'Driscoll's until very recently, okay. um, when, sadly, he passed towards the end of, of last oh. year in December. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, he was, uh, you know, encompassed and embodied the, the O'Driscoll name, which has been around for hundreds of years. Yeah. Um, in fact, the, the O'Driscoll's have a, a kind of rich pirateering yeah. and smuggling right. A legacy back in the in the past and oh, Dermot was the founder's grandfather yeah he did mention about the smuggling and all that but i, I right. found i found him very interesting but i kind of have an affinity for people with experience and knowledge i always look up to elders and as my father taught me myself shame the devil and tell the truth you know which was a good thing to learn from my father too now speaking of smuggling i had another product on here a number of months back it was called a smuggling nun mm. and she was promoting a brand which is a putching which is totally different from the O'Driscoll's whiskey it's totally different uh, type of product it's clear it, it looks like vodka but it's not for vodka it's much stronger and you have to kind of mix it with something to uh, <clears throat> achieve um, well to get, get to, to drink it but more was her name but the smuggling nun was drinking the whiskey with myself on the podcast and i think her habit fell off but that's not a bad thing i kept talking to her so let's get back to your product where is it available here in new york as you say so as i say i've only been in Rome for six weeks but i've made quite a splash in that time particularly in the upper east side and um, yeah. i actually live in the upper east side so my uh, kind of strategy has been to canvas a lot of the Upper East Side bars to make sure that the product is, is readily available in those um, so that I can nurture them, I can go and do spends there, I can go and promote the brand. Um, so in the Upper East Side, we are in a number of bars. We're in Caledonia Bar, Trinity Bar, uh, Dorian's, we're in Dylan Murphy's. Good. We're in Five Mile Stone, 
we're in five lamps. Um, we're also in, as you mentioned, uh, Finnegan's Wake. Finnegan's Wake. Um, we're shortly going to be in the, the Gaff East. Um, we're also in Iggy's okay. and Annie Moore's, which has recently been rebranded as Murphy's. Okay. Uh, and also Mel's Burgers, to name but a few. Okay. Well, I have a bunch more for to introduce you to because I, I tend to bounce around new bars, a lot of new bars. Like Hendrickson's is on First Avenue in the 60s. And that's, well, that's... Actually, I'm in Hendrickson's too. Oh, <laughs> good man. Well done. You're ahead of me there. Yeah. <laughs> Another one called Malone's. That, that opened only a few months ago. That's down on 3rd Avenue and 43rd. The same owner owns Molly Molly Weaves, or Molly's, as is known. Okay. Hence, he tied the two names, Molly Malone's. So there, there's a lot of a lot of uh, doors you have to knock on yet. <clears throat> but you're doing extremely good, I must say, for for a young man that's only been at it six weeks. You well, it's, do- a, it's an excellent product. You know, that's certainly oh, helping. It- Helping significantly. Like, excellent, yeah. You know, I've glad- probably been to, oh, I would say, 170, 180 bars and restaurants in the last five weeks. Right. And it's very rare that I've, I've heard anything negative about the whiskey whatsoever. Oh, absolutely not, no. I, I, my background is marketing, by the way, and I did a lot of marketing podcasts on here. I was on here with Tom Sanchez. We spoke about branding, which is very, very important. And I did speak about the four P's in marketing, like price, place, product, and promotion. The most important one of these four P's in the world of marketing is the product. Because if you don't have the product, you, you, you cannot market, you cannot promote. The product has, you have to have confidence in it. You clearly have confidence in your product, which makes it easier for you to promote it. So the product is good. And um, that was my marketing pitch there. So that's important. I think that you, your product is good, so it makes it easy to, to, to sell it. So let's see what else we have to wrap up. Now, if people have questions for you, what's the best way for them to contact you? Or I can send you on messages if they come through my platform here. Sure. Yep, your best to contact me via Graham, and that's G-R-A-E-M-E. It's a Scottish way of spelling it. Graham at odriscollsirishwhiskey.com. Okay, we've put that up for you. Right, so my uh, the podcast is called It's Good to Talk. My guest today is Graham Hawken. If I pronounced your name right, hopefully. I don't Hawkins, want to, yeah. Hawkins, okay, I don't want to freeze again, like the last time I was on. Can't be making those mistakes, or I'll get <laughs> fired from my job here. So and the product is called O'Driscoll's. It's distilled in Baltimore, in West Cork. It's a fishing town. It's a tourist town, and it's also a ferry town. And they have a beacon in the middle of the town, and its nickname is called the Pillar of Salt. And by the way, if Adam Cardona is listening to me, which he will be, salt was used one time also as a currency. Hence, Adam Cardona, if you listen, you worked your weight in salt. That came from the Romans who were paid their wages in salt. So, Graham, will we... Anything else to say? You do name? Oh, I forgot to ask you. Finnegan's Wake wanted to know, when are you back doing some more promotions? Uh, well, at the moment, I've been doing promotions weekly. I've been doing some spends and getting the product out there, getting liquid on lips. Um, Finnegan's Wake, I'll probably be back at some point this week, and I'll do yeah. another tasting with them. Okay. Yeah, Finola Lynch is the new owner of Finnegan's Wake, and she very impressed with the product. I'm very impressed with you as a salesman. Tony King is from Donegal. He is the previous owner of um, Finnegan's Wake. And when I did speak to the smuggling nun, Tony always corrects me if I need correction, and sometimes I do. And he was had great praise for Bushmills Whiskey, which is way up the other end of Ireland. If O'Driscoll's is on the southern point, Bushmills is way up in Antrim, and it's supposedly the longest whiskey in the world. But I also welcome O'Driscoll's, a new product. So with that being said, if you have anything to add to our conversation, feel free to take the platform. Thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to tell you a little bit about the tasting notes. Oh, please. Um, yeah. so I don't know yeah. if you'll be able to tell from here, but it has a lovely golden color. 
Um, on the nose, you've got a very light nose, hints of toffee apple in there, some hints of cloves and uh, a little butterscotch, maybe a little bit of cinnamon towards the rear. Okay. Uh, on the palate, you're getting a lovely sweetness, probably mainly influenced by the fact that it's been matured for three years in bourbon casks, so very suitable for the American market. So okay. sweetness followed by a little toffee, almost a, a kind of soft vanilla, okay. uh, a little fruitiness, and then in the finish, a, a, a light spicy finish, lots of sweetness, absolutely delicious. 40% ABV, so alcohol per volume, and uh, just a, a superior product. You know, it's an outstanding right. product, at, and it's an outstanding price. It is. No, I totally agree. And again, getting back to my friends at Finnegan's Wake, uh, Courtney and Claudia and Stanley, they totally agreed and they gave it the thumbs up for being a good product. And they've, they're all converted to O'Driscoll's, which is good because products, you know, go through phases and then something comes along and then they switch, which is good. It, it's good. Change is good. We shouldn't be afraid of change. We should adopt it. That's what I always say. I'm glad you gave us the tasting tips there. I didn't know that there there's a lot of ingredients in there that make it a, a more unique product. And that's back to my marketing expertise. Again, you could say it has a USP, which means a unique selling point over and above its competitors. So I'll be, I look forward to meeting you again in Finnegan's and we will have a shot of O'Driscoll's. Graham, if you've anything else to add, you've, you got the floor. Thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, uh, oh, goodness, sorry, I don't know. Um, let's see. I think we covered it all. I think so. I think so. Um, you know, in summary, I would say that this is an outstanding product. Uh, right. It's an authentic Irish product. It's, right. uh, you know, every aspect of um, of the whiskey has been made, produced in Ireland. Uh, okay. And it's actually from, you know, our, our maturation warehouses are in Wexford in the okay. southeast. Uh, but the, uh, the actual liquid is distilled in uh, the Royal Oak Distillery and the West Cork Distillery. Okay. So 80% of the grain which we use is produced in the Royal Oak. And then the 20% of the malt is used, uh, is, is distilled in the, the, the West Cork Distillery. Okay, very good. All right, I think we've kind of covered all the bases. I look forward to meeting you out and about in one of the many bars that you've been in, and I hopefully meet you there for a tasting. So with that, I'm going to say slong a while, and good luck to you, and good luck to O'Driscoll's. I'm sorry Mr. O'Driscoll passed away at the good age, mature age, shall we say, of 104. I'm sure you had a good, long, and healthy, and hearty life, and I'm sure O'Driscoll's whiskey helped him live longer. Okay, Graham, I'm going to say slon. I'm going to say goodbye to you. Bye, Graham. Pleasure to meet you, John. Thanks for the opportunity. My pleasure too.